right, so when the edit action is called, we're going to set is editing to true. And when the done editing action is called, we're going to set it to false. So the controller is in charge of keeping track of the state of the current page. And so now to our post template so that when we are viewing a post, we can um, toggle in between editing and not editing. I'm just going to show this guy at the top for demonstration purposes. Um, if is editing, so this is talking to the controller and in general you can just talk to the controller as if it is your model, um, but you can also access additional state that is stored by the controller. We're going to render a partial called post edit. Um, then we're going to render a button which is bound to the action done editing. So in other words, when you click this done button, the done editing action will be called in your controller. And when you click, so for not editing, which is by default, um, is editing is false. So this will show up first. Um, we'll have an edit button, which is bound to the action edit. So when you click that, now the controller state is has a, is editing set to true and we will render this partial and the done button so that means we should probably make a partial for editing otherwise um, not a lot is going to happen so I'm going to go ahead and make a folder called post oops and in there, we are going to say we have an underscore prefixed uh, partial template called edit. In here, we're going to use some handlebars helpers to use some magical uh, inputs and text areas. So this is very much like you'd see in HTML, except using the handlebar helper, helpers. These will be bound to the actual model that we're dealing with, and it'll be beautiful. So let's go see if this works. It's looking bad. Let's go see what broke. Ooh, unexpected identifier. All right, post.js in the controller. Do, 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 do. do you see it? I don't see it yet. Oh, is that a comma there? Are you happy now? Looks happy. Let's refresh. Oh, that's lovely. So now, if we click at it, we get this beautifully styled form. And now you see if we type anything to here, it is live editing the title of this post, both in the navigation and in the post template here. Click done, goes away. Go here, monkeys are super done. All right, so you see those edits uh, apply both there. Of course, if you refresh, they're gone because it's not persisted anywhere. Okay, so now pretty much every web application has to do with dates. So, we are going to now add a date to our post template. Down here. Right. So, let's just show this guy here. So, we're setting small class makes the text 
uh, small, if you couldn't guess, and put on the date. So now, if we go back to our server, mock, uh, poc, mock, mock, post, that guy. And let's go and find our posts. And so, in our posts, let's just add a date here and say new date. 2014 just for the sake of having a date. And let's make this one different just so we can see the differences. Um, Alright, so now if we view this post, we should see. Um, date there. Let's restart our server since we changed our HTTP mock endpoint. I'm hoping that fixes it. We'll see. It didn't. Alright, what's the problem? So if we inspect that guy, it just doesn't get a date. Oh, uh, we need to go update our model, because right now our model is throwing away any attributes that we don't define. Okay, so model post. Hey buddy, you've got a date, and you're of type date. Super, now we get our very computery formatted timestamp. So. We would like that to not look like that, I would assume. I mean, you don't want to show your users that, right? So the next thing, I lost my text editor. Let's bring it back. All right, so what we're gonna do now is install a JavaScript library called Moment. So, I use npm to install moment there and then we need to add it to our Brock file and the next thing we're going to do is add our own custom uh, handlebars helper so We're going to go into App Helpers. A new file called a format date .js. And so in here, we have a customary import and export statements. And so in here, we're going to say ember handlebars make bound helper and then pass that a function which takes in the date and then uses moment to uh, format it to be a string that says hey this is so long ago essentially or from now I guess it works in the future too who knows alright so then we're going to go to our uh, template uh, post hps again and so in here where we use a date, we're just going to say from, or uh, from me, format date, and pass that the date. So that will use our newly defined handlebars helper and break terribly. Seems like our npm install didn't actually save a moment. Mm. So 
looks like what I copied was from Power Components. This is on the new module. Alright, so this again shows the loveliness of using Barack file where you need the specific uh, path to the thing that you are asking it to compile for you or to like, compile for you. Alright, so let's try the server again. It's still mad. Oh, it's still mad. That should have worked. Here, so node modules is here. We should see a moment in here. Min moment dot min dot js. That sure seems like it should be there. Um. Well, I give up on that and say, hey, let's try just installing directly with power. Okay, so let's ignore that the npm install ever happened because I don't get what's going on. And so in Bower Components, we should have a moment with uh, the identical folder structure we saw before. So let's say Bower Components moment min moment dot min dot js. How many mins can you have? All of them. Try that guy again. <laughs> Beautiful. So now, instead of the very explicit and verbose uh, timestamp, we now see three months ago. And this guy should have a different one seven months ago. Lovely. Alright, so as a final thing, let's let's uh, let's support markdown so if our post body supports markdown it would be nice if we could say like uh, controversial and it became metallic right i mean i know that there's nothing more that you desire in your life than for that to become metallic so let us make it so so right now we are going to try the npm install route again and see how it works with showdown so Showdown is a JavaScript library that uh, transcompiles uh, Markdown into HTML. So now in our Brock file, we are again going to try using this guy. So let's go see if that exists. Bower components. It sure doesn't. That's probably the problem. Alright, obviously very well rehearsed. Alright, so now I get showdown compressed to showdown that is beautiful. Alright, so now we get all of our vendor libraries managed via broccoli. And so now the next thing that we need to do is create another markdown helper. So we will go back into helpers and create a new file called um format markdown.js and so in here we import ember and we export default with 
once again, ember handlebars make bound helper with the function where we get whatever the function the helper is called with. In this case, we call it markdown. We create a new showdown converter. And then because we want this to be treated as safe HTML and not escaped, we are making it a handlebars.safe string. Um, otherwise, it'll be escaped so that you don't get um, like cross-site scripting things or like uh, JavaScript injected into your web application. So this is a potentially a dangerous thing to do. Um, and but we're going to use showdown to make HTML from the markdown. And so then we're going to go update once again our uh, post template. Say hey you format markdown and so let's restart our server. So usually you get the live reload things that'll make uh, minor updates for you. Um, so now we can see these still exist. So if we go and update our uh, mocks, and let's just add some simple mark down here. Now we can see, hey, that is italic. So we can edit this, make that bigger. And what's really cool about this is that we can see We can uh, add markdown and it displays in real time. As we type it. And so, I mean, again, we're not persisting this, but you can see the updates in real time as we type it. And that's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for sticking uh, with me. Goodbye.